Hi dear students, a warm good morning to all of you. Welcome to the next session of Cenobiotics. In the previous classes, we had mentioned what are Cenobiotics and we came across different examples of Cenobiotics. And today we will be coming across uh, dioxins and hydrocarbons as Cenobiotics. Now let's explore them. Dioxin, uh, the name dioxin is often used to the family of structurally and chemically related polychlorinated dibenzoparadioxins and polychlorinated dibenzofluorins. So, certain dioxin like uh, polychlorinated biphenyls with similar toxic properties are also being included under the term dioxin. And you can find that different, uh, almost about 419 types of molecules have been present over there, which are related to the process, uh, which are related to the compounds called the dioxin. And uh, only 30 of them are being considered to be of significant toxicity, with TCDD being the most toxic. So you might think, what is this dioxin? So we will explore the structure of it. A molecule. Now, this is polychlorinated dibenzodioxin. You are having two oxygen molecules within the moiety. Okay. And this is a dioxin in a sense. Okay. And then you can also have dibenzo, uh, polychlorinated dibenzofurans. Furans. In this, there is only one oxygen over here. So, related to this, what is dioxin? A dioxin is a moiety which is having what? It can have two oxygen molecules within it. And of course, chlorination can happen to it. You need not learn the uh, structure of it, but you need to know what is it. So, these dioxins, they are of wide range of compounds. They can be sometimes be chlorinated at two locations, sometimes at uh, four locations and all that. But uh, what does it mean? Two oxygens will be there. And of course, just look at the structure of it. This is a structure which is having a benzene ring also. So this is something which would add to its recalcitrance so that uh, the degradation of it will not be easy. Now, where are these dioxins coming from? It can obtain by industrial processes such as chlorine bleaching, uh, chlor uh, chlorine bleaching of paper pulp. Then when we uh, manufacture some herbicides and pesticides, or when uncontrollable, uncontrolled hospital waste incinerators are used. Now, in the hospitals, we have incinerators which will break down the or which are used to uh, to uh, to um, um, what to burn out the solid waste. We have the incinerators. So when you are using uncontrollably the hospital waste incinerators, during that time also dioxins can be liberated into the atmosphere. Uh, Due, during the process of incineration or due to some metallurgical processes you can have and also sometimes uh, the backyard burning of trash to some extent also can release dioxins and volcanoes and forest fires etc can also release uh, the compound called the dioxins. So it's always wise that when we are burning them now you need not be close to them and these are some other point sources of dioxins. Of course, I have already mentioned to you the municipal solid waste incinerators, biomedical waste incinerators, hazardous waste incinerators, industrial boilers and furnaces, and biogas combustion, landfill gas combustion, hot mix plants with stack, crematorium with stack, and uh, cement, cement kilns. These all will be the uh, liberating dioxins. Dioxins are compounds with four or more chlorines in their molecular structure and they are being found to be extremely stable and uh, uh, mainly it's because they do not break down or change into the other substances. That is the reason why they are being considered to be as stable and they are also being considered to be as persistent organic pollutants because they do not change or break down their structure. And according to the Environmental Protection Agency's report, they refer dioxin as a hydrophobic and a lipophilic in nature. That is, it is not, it is water appearing. That is, it is not soluble in water, and it is not, uh, and it has been found to be fat loving. Sorry, it's 
lipophilic in nature. So, we know that when a substance is not being soluble in water, uh, okay, uh, it becomes difficult for the microbes to degrade them. So, the structure of dioxin is in such a way that it also, it has oxygens, okay, it has chlorines attached to it and of course, it's an aromatic nature uh, and it has been found to be water. It has been found to be hydrophobic in nature. So, all of these will contribute to its what difficulty to be broken down into the into the smaller forms. And they mainly remain as persistent organic pollutants. What do you mean by persistent? That is, they remain unchanged just like that as they were itself in the environment. So, this is about the persistent organic pollutants. So, what does it mean? Once a pollutant has been formed, Okay, it might, it will uh, move from one place to the other. Now, it is coming to the atmosphere. After coming to the atmosphere through the rain, again it comes back to the, that is from the lithosphere, these organic pollutants, if they are produced in the lithosphere, they will come into the atmosphere. And then after that, they will be again, uh, they will be again coming back to the lithosphere along with the water through the rain and all that. So, they are always remaining in the, in the uh, ecosystem without going from there. Now, how can we get exposed to ecosystem uh, dioxins? Of course, uh, sometimes by eating food, in particularly animal products contaminated with these chemicals. If we uh, get food which is already being contaminated by dioxins, we might get it. And this is fat soluble. And so dioxins are absorbed and stored in the fat tissue and will accumulate in the food chain. And uh, more than 90% of the human exposure is through the food which we have. And by beef ingestion like this, these are some of the different in North America, uh, how dioxin was being inject, uh, like accumulated. Of course, through the <clears throat> water and soil and injection, water, it is totally negligible, uh, mainly because what it is not soluble in that. So, uh, it will not become a part of it. It will just, uh, it won't be soluble in it. It will, if it is being carried by it also, but to get it from the water, it's not easy from it. Okay. And then, effect of dioxins, you should know what is it. You can have skin lesions or sometimes chloracne. Well, uh, patchy darkening of the skin can happen. Liver function can be altered. Dermatitis, gastrointestinal problems could be there. Then, you could also have long-term effects like decrease in the sperm production by almost 50% each, decrease in the testosterone, the male sex hormone, that will be reduced. Or sometimes in the B cell and the T cell counts, B cell and T cells, these are lymphocytes which play an important role in the immunity. They can be decreased. The number of uh, immunologically competent B cells and T cells will be reduced. Or they can cause nerve damage, birth defects. And sometimes you can see TCDD, one of the toxic uh, dioxins which we have, they can also cause cancer resulting in lung cancer. And it is also an endocrine disruptor. And what happens? In humans, they, it would cause reduced fertility and increased incide incidence of endometriosis. Endometriosis is nothing but the uh, breakdown of the wall of the uterus. Okay, so that is the, uh, so th these are some instances of uh, the occurrence of uh, dioxin. What are the long term effects of that? Now, there were also instances of uh, dioxin contamination incidents. Now, in 1976, a uh, large amount of dioxins were released in a serious accident at a chemical factory in Sevesco in Italy. And uh, what happens, uh, TCDD was released into the air and eventually contaminated an area of about 15 square kilometers where about 37,000 people died, uh, lived. And within a day, 3,300 animals were found dead. 447 people were found to suffer from skin lesions or chloracne. And uh, in 1999, high levels of dioxins were found in animal-based food from Belgium. And... Uh, because the cause was traced to be animal feed was contaminated what illegally disposed PCB based industrial oil. So, either the animals or, uh, or the 
either the food can be the food what the poultry like in this case the poultry as well as the pork and all that they were the food which they ate was being contaminated by the dioxins and also a few cases of intentional human poisoning have also been reported uh, and the most notable incident is in 2004 the case of viktor yushchenko the president of ukraine whose face was disfigured by chloracne by exposure to the uh, what dioxins now how do you have to reduce this uh, uh, dioxin exposure it's better to remove the skin from the fish and the chicken and wash the fresh vegetables as well as fruits to remove any leftover pesticide or herbicide before eating and of course select cuts of meat that are naturally lean or you should avoid the fat portion because it's in the fat portion that we see that there is more amount of dio the chances of dioxin to enter or fat free or low uh, low fat milk can be avoided and while catching from catching fish from pond or stream check the local fishing advisories that is if the fish is getting um, what dying or not so that it will give you an indication whether that water is contaminated with dioxin and so uh, prevention and control is to control uh, you should have some control measures during incineration so that dioxins are not much migrated to the environment and uh, the improve uh, the combustion conditions so that complete incineration have should be happen and you should, you can control the temperature time or you can separate the fly ashes or you can also add some inorganic additives also into it and some organic additives also can be added so that um, the dioxin formation can be see in your case uh, regarding i just want you to know what is a dioxin and uh, why is it called as as an abiotic and why is it being found to be recalcitrant and i guess by this you will know what is it and let me just move on to the next synobiotic which i want to describe the hydrocarbons as we all know hydrocarbons could be aliphatic aromatic saturated or unsaturated cyclic or non cyclic what are hydrocarbons these are been present in our everyday life as fuels as lubricants uh, in different industries in aviation fuel and all that we use hydrocarbons and hydrocarbons could be of what aliphatic in nature where the carbon chains are being linked together by single single bonds or they might contain benzene ring like structures and which would make them aromatic in nature and among the aliphatic compound hydrocarbons they can be alkanes alkenes or alkynes where alkenes do not have double bonds alkenes have double bonds and uh, alkynes have triple bonds or more yeah triple bonds yeah so uh, these are the different types of uh, hydrocarbons which we have so this is a aliphatic hydrocarbon which we have and it's a alkene because it does not have a, any double bond only single bonds are being found over there and coming to alkenes they have the double bond and coming to the next one alkynes they have the what a triple bond so the complexity this is about the complex i'm just going introducing you to what are these hydrocarbons and what are they structurally now coming to aromatic compounds they will have the benzene ring on attached to them and we know that uh, hydrocarbons uh, as well as other synobiotics when they have uh, structures like benzene they, it becomes difficult to degrade them so petrochemicals uh, which are which we use okay they all contain different hydrocarbons and these are chemicals derived from petroleum or natural gas and you can see that they will be a mixture of different compounds they can contain acetylene benzene ethane ethylene uh, methane propane hydrogen and a large amount of compounds are being together being formed in a petrochemical and it could also include various other things like uh, plastics uh, soaps pharmaceuticals fertilizers pesticides and detergents these are all being derived from the petrochemicals itself and one of the most important problem caused by the hydrocarbon uh, is hydrocarbons is mainly because resulting from the activities of the petrochemical industry because there would be accident release of various petroleum products to the environment and some of the hydrocarbons 
uh, they belong to the family of carcinogens and they are neurotoxic organic pollutants and they can go into the water as well as the soil causing pollution there and they can also accumulate various other pollutants in the living cells and cause death or even mutation and thus the removal of these hydrocarbons or the petrochemicals from the environment becomes necessary. So you got an idea of what are hydrocarbons and uh, what are uh, what is the necessity to remove them. Now let me just uh, I guess you have got an idea and we will stop here now about the what are the different types of xenobiotics we have got an idea. Now, in the next session, uh, we would be talking about the biodegradation of these xenobiotics with a general view and I would be giving emphasis on the degradation of hydrocarbons as an example. So, thank you for now.